Hello, this is Overlord Boat, and today we'll be talking about the brand stinking new Emilmon, the new tier 10 premium aircraft carrier for the Germans. This ship you can get for the pretty price of 264,000 coal. So today we'll be talking about the ship build, and along we'll be talking about its gameplay as long as showing a replay along that I did as well. Do take note that I am not a CV main, so the gameplay you'll be seeing is from someone that doesn't really play CV, so the fact that I do as much damage as I did in this coming match is going to be quite surprising, but it's just going gonna to show the power of this ship. So I'll let SAT sort of start us off with the commander build. Alright, so for the commander build, it's pretty similar to the other carrier skills we've recommended in the past. So last gas, improved engine boost, air supremacy, those are your tier one skills. For tier two skills, you'll take the torpedo bomb for reduced army distance, and you'll take improved engines. Since half of your strike planes are torpedo bombers, the reducing the army distance is especially helpful. For your three point skills, that's pretty standard. Aircraft Armor Survivability Expert, you take it on every CV. For your four point skills, you want to get increased cruising speed since all you're doing is flying bombers, and, and so 5% is extremely helpful. And you also want the skill that negates torpedo protection. That will allow your torpedo bombers to do a lot more damage through battleship torpedo, their torpedo protection system since that is one of your primary targets as the Imamon. Alright, so I will do the mods for the ship. So, the first slot should be the Air Groups Modification 1, which increases the returning speed of your air squadrons by 20%. The second slot should be the Aircraft Engines Modification 1, which makes your engine boost duration plus 10%. The number three slot should be torpedo to timer attack time. Very, very useful. Plus five seconds makes it so you can launch further away so that you're less likely, you're more likely to take less damage. Skip bomber modification, skip bomber HP by plus 0.75%. Since most of your damage will be coming from the skip bombs, you want to make sure that you do have more health into the skip bombs. They also don't have a heal, so it's also important to do that. For number five, it's more of a personal preference. I chose the flight control modification for the extra aircraft restoration time and for the extra two planes, but you could also do concealment as well if you feel like you want to have your carrier closer in. Uh, you can do that as well. And for the final slot, of course, you want the flight control modification too. This is a must. You need that one for this one for the increased speed. This isn't really necessary for the modification too. This ship's this carrier's specialty is its speed which helps it be able to dodge and go through the flak without taking damage so you definitely need the faster speed so now we're gonna watch the replay so give us one moment to get that up and we're back so in this match i'll be playing the El melmon i was playing with my friend elkanai and mortis who is part of my clan so I'll let SAT score talk a little bit about the ship and we'll go from there. So the Imelmann is a tier 10 German carrier. It is, what, we, what we've seen, not, uh, it's completely unique compared to the others. It carries two types of aircraft, the torpedo bombers and the uh, skip bombers. A lot of players have likened the Imelmann uh, to a tier 10 Kaga in that it has huge plane reserves. So you carry 24 you carry 24 of each type on your deck and each squad carries 12 planes. So you can output strikes for quite a while. Keep in mind there is no rockets unlike the other carriers. So you are going to rely on your skip bombers if you want to reliably damage uh, destroyers. So here, let's, uh, since the skip bombers make up half of your strike reserves, let's go into detail on how they work. So, uh, for watching the video, you have three lines over here. Those will show you where the skip bombs will land with each drop. 
The first one of, is where you will, the first line is the closest one is where you're gonna drop it, and the furthest line is the last, uh, the last uh, skip, well, the last uh, draw. It, uh, the further you drop it from, the more accurate it will become. So if you drop, if you get right next to a ship, then it is uh, not quite as accurate. So here we go. We're gonna drop it at the max range, and it will do some damage to Thunderer. It mainly spreads um, from the videos. It looks like it spreads in a mainly horizontal way. So you ideally want to target broadside ships. So the bombs themselves, they are very, they are HE skip bombs. You can think of them as pretty similar to mid, uh, dropping midway bombs uh, sideways. So, uh, the, one of the uh, one of the bigger advantages to using skip bombs is that you can attack ships from a farther distance. Compared to the traditional dive bombers, you have to fly directly over the ship in order to launch your attacks. This can result in high plane losses if you're attacking groups, just because your planes are forced to fly over the entire group before you get your strike off. But as you can see here, Bo is able to stay on the edge of the group and get his strike off. And he doesn't lose as many planes uh, performing that attack run. Since this, uh, since we're using German planes, these are rel these are relatively fast, but still fragile planes. So you want to be careful with uh, throwing into uh, tight ship formations. Also, to note that this ship does have some weird replay bugs so if you see some random bugs like you saw just there where it's in the water or something that is due to a replay bug that's happening with the ship currently so yeah we know of the issue is just it's just there so just wanted to let you know that you can continue their uh, SAT score all right uh the Imamon's torpedo bombers is another reason why many compare her to Kaka you'll be dropping four torpedoes per drop uh, in a kind of like a Kaga-like uh, Kaga -like, uh, drop pattern. You also get the heal, and you get 12 per, uh, you get 12 planes per drop. But there are notable differences between Kaga's and Elamon's torpedoes. Uh, Kaga's, I believe, does a bit more damage and is notably faster. So make sure to lead far for Elamon's torpedoes. They go only 35 knots base, so. It's especially difficult to drop on speedy cruisers. Other than the slow speed of the torpedoes, there's nothing really special. But yeah, something to note though is that during this match, just realize that me as a WoWs player, I don't really play CVs. And you can kind of see or like how I play the CV itself that I'm not like I'm not really doing the traditional CV style at all So I really touch CVs maybe like once a month and I've played this ship three days sorry three three matches so far three four in the randoms and I have around a hundred and seventy K average so far with this ship and my top match so far I was this one which I think was around a 208,000 so it's kind of insane that the fact is is that someone that doesn't even really play CVs is able to pump out such huge numbers um it just kind of proves that like this ship is like I find this ship a lot of fun even though I'm not really a CV person myself um, I, f I like the concept of the skip bombs like it's fun. It's a little it's it's a it's a new little mechanic It's fun. Um, I enjoy the mechanic um, But I still personally don't enjoy playing CVs all the time 
but this is a CV that I can just play from time to time if I feel like I want to play a CV. Um, the main strength that this ship has, from my experience, is that the ship, um, its speed of the planes are able to get in and out of the damage of the AA super quickly. And this ship will almost, uh, the planes will almost never take any flak because you're going in and out of the flak bubble so quickly that they're, that they, uh, their, their flak doesn't have time to really hit you. The only time their flak will hit you is if you're slowing down inside of their bubble or you're not going at your top speed, which is then it's your own fault if you get eaten by flak. But so far, I've, I've barely eaten any flak in these ships. It's, it's just so easy to dodge the flak with these things. The top speed of being over 200 easy is just... It just makes the ship super strong in randoms. But for ranked or clan battles, I don't think it's going to be able to do the carrying rate in the future. But I'll let SAT score talk about that more. So, ranked is a little bit different from randoms. The meta tends to shift more towards uh, focusing destroyers. That's why midway, uh, midway hawk crew are considered pretty strong. FDR is also strong just because she just smashes enemy ships without regard for their AA. Uh, Evil Man, Evil Man would be interesting. So the skip bombers don't, uh, how does the skip bombers perform against destroyers in your experience? So from the matches I've played like in training rooms and such, um, when you tr aim for D's at the second ribbon and not the furthest one, um, you are able to hit DDs and cruisers that are able to be more maneuverable. Um, but it's still hard. And if they are going away from you, like in a straight line, it's almost impossible for your bombs to hit. They have to be at a horizontal, either turning in or away from you for your bombs to have a chance. If you're trying to get them from head on or from their aft end, you're not gonna, you're not gonna get them. You have to get them when they're broadside. And a lot of DDs are just gonna stay stealth. And since you're so fast, you're gonna be zooming by. Uh, some of them are just gonna turn off their AA and you're not going to be able to spot them right away. So by the time you respot a, a DD, they may have already turned and you just wasted your time trying to attack it. So usually it's best to like get a fighter over it, then do it around. But I still have had some success hitting DDs. It's just not 100% accurate. Like it's not 100%. This this ship is, the, this CV is more specific for going after battleships, uh, slower cruisers, it can also go after light cruisers as well, but DDs are kind of its weakness. So that might that will definitely give it problems in ranked, where a destroyer uh, being able to remove destroyers reliably and efficiently is a huge asset. Evil Man, uh, Man can play a, a similar role to the FDR though, because uh, FDR wins her games by just bombing the crap out of everything. So, if Emo Man is just as good as farming, or even better, then I think she would be a solid ship in ranked. You just have to keep in mind that 5DD matches are pretty bad for you. Ironically enough. Yeah, if this ship is entered into a 5DD match, I don't think it's going to go very well for the CV. All the CV would be good for at that point is just spotting. Uh, how easy would you say Ibamon is to pick up and play? Because it looks like, as you said, you don't play CVs very often, but you're already above 100k damage in the ship. So, from my first time playing it in the training room and then to the matches I've been playing it already, it's just really easy to play. The torp times are really short. So it's really easy just to get really close and personal with those ships. So if they're trying to hide by islands, they're not going to get that advantage. And you're able to tr use your, and since the planes are so fast, you're able to use the bombers to make, to get a fire, to make them waste their DCP. And you go right back at them with torpedoes or no more bombers. 
to then hit them again and get a permanent fire or a permanent flood on them. Because you can get across the map in these in this plane with these planes because they're so fast. Like if you saw the fact that I've literally farmed this Ohio pretty much on my own by getting floods, um it it just proves the fact that like this thing is it's just so fast. You can also use the bombs to hop over little island parts here. If you see here on the right bomb, it hops over that little section right there. You can use that to make a CV, uh, make a player think they're safe, and then you hop over a little island section and then you bomb them instead. So this skip bomb is gonna have a lot of potential on a lot of like technicality and how you play it. So I I. I I usually I'm not optimistic about a CV uh, because I usually uh, I don't I, I do feel like CVs aren't balanced but I do feel like that this ship is a little bit too easy to play um, from a personal since the fact I don't play CVs the fact that I'm able to do literally right now 171 K and it's still gonna go up the fact that I'm doing that when I barely touch CVs is just ridiculous. I shouldn't be able to hop in this ship and do this much within my first three matches of this thing. That's insane. It's 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 ridiculous. Um but the thing is though, like and the thing is though, I messed up a lot of my drops in this match. And I know for a fact that if I actually knew what I was doing with CVs, I could have easily got a 300k in this match. No problem. This match was easily a 300k match if I actually knew what I was doing as a CV player. But I main DDs, cruisers, and battleships, so I don't really touch in the realm of CVs. Like, this is actually my first CV video. Like, I don't really go in the realm of CVs at all. But this new drop mechanic was such a cool mechanic to me that I, I just wanted to talk about it. So that's the only reason I really am. I think it's a cool new feature and a cool new mechanic of the game. Um, I don't know. I think it's like two points on it. Like, we're at 183k. The ship also can do a lot of damage to CVs with the drop bomb. Like, you just watch how much I do here with the FDR. I do... I hit three bombs and I do ten, like 10k. So if you hit all four bombs and you just fly really fast, that's 12k. 12, 13k to another carrier, which is incredible. And you can keep just flying over and over like super fast by and do it and kill them. So your damage is pretty high. How would you say, what about the game impact? How would you s uh, how would you say, like, how much influence does it, did your ammo man have uh, for your couple of ammo man matches? So, um, in the matches that I was in, since I'm not really a top-notch CV player, I'm more focused on just taking out the higher health targets and trying to do spotting. So I would always do the initial spotting in the match and then go for farming after. So I'd help my team with that, and then I would usually stick to one side. Um, a smarter CV player would more likely um, put up a fighter defense for their teammates as they're going by to attack the enemy. But since I'm more inexperienced, I kind of was more focused on the damage aspect and keeping enemies spotted as I attach targets. Which in the end helped us out tremendously because we needed spotting in the south and I went over there to help out spotting in the south for my teammates. Um, so I did my best to do that. Um, and then I went back north when I needed to. But in the end, this match was just... Like, I was laughing with my clan, uh, my clan member and my friend about, like, how much damage I was doing. Because it's just ridiculous that the fact is, is that I'm able to do so much damage. And the thing is, is if I can do this much damage, just think about everyone else. But... Is there anything else you want to add, SAT score, before we end it? So, do you recommend the ship? As the first tier 10 coal, sh uh, coal carrier in the game, I do recommend this ship for people to get. It's, it's free, 
You just gotta get coal, and that's it. So I do recommend it. Um, it's a good credit grinder, good free XP, um, good commander trainer for your Rigtoff, and you plan on getting that. So I do recommend it. So, but thank you so much, SAT Square, for your time today. I greatly appreciate it, man. Thank you so much again, brother. That's all the time we have for the day. If you guys have any questions or concerns down below, definitely let us know. I'll do my best to answer them. It's still SAT. And I'll talk to y'all later. Hey guys, thanks for watching today's video. If you enjoy this kind of content, make sure to like and leave a comment down below. I always love reading your guys' comments. It's greatly appreciated. Bleh.